Number one, Spook House. I live in a really scary looking house. I inherited it from a fairly wealthy aunt when she passed away. In the town that I live in, it was considered a spook house. Kids thought it was haunted and a lot of them thought that my aunt was a witch. She wasn't a recluse or anything, but she did spend a lot of time alone. I was definitely aware of all this when I decided to move into the house. I didn't care though. I have been a writer, and I am successful enough to live on the income I get from writing, so I did spend a lot of time at home. I came to wonder if the kids would think that I was a witch, like they did with my aunt, but I never heard any of them call me that, and the kids did not ever harass me or anything. I honestly think that they were too scared to come anywhere near the house, really. Anyway, I quite enjoy living in the house. It was pretty big for only one person, but it was very comfortable. My aunt even had a reading room that was on the east side of the house. It was filled with books and had a very comfortable couch for sitting and reading. I spent a lot of time in there reading good books. One evening I was reading a particularly good book when I began to feel very odd for some reason. I can't explain that feeling even today. It was a very off feeling. I wasn't able to shake. It also kept me from getting lost in my book. After a while, I decided to get up and check around. The sun had not set yet, but it was in the process of doing so. Everything outside was a very bright orange color. I went out into the front room and looked out the window. I didn't see anything at first, but then I thought I saw a dark figure run out of my yard and onto the sidewalk. It was from the corner of my eye, and it happened so fast that I didn't get a good look at the figure. Knowing about the history of the house, I chalked it up to just being a kid doing something weird. Like maybe one of his friends dared him to go up to the spook house. Maybe he saw me in the window, lost his nerve, and then ran off. It made perfect sense to me. I don't know how I had that sense, but it seemed unimportant to me. I decided to go back and read for a bit. After a while I decided I wanted to get myself a cup of tea. I went in the kitchen to put on the kettle. Then I got that weird feeling again. This time I turned around and looked out the kitchen window. I didn't see anything at first, but then after a moment I saw a bush shake a little bit. It was dark outside, so I really couldn't see much at that point but someone emerged from behind the bush and ran off. Once again, I thought that it was some kid just trying to torment me, and I put it out of my mind. As I mentioned, I had accepted everything that came with the house, including the children being silly, so I didn't think it was anything important or that I should call the police or anything. I had my tea, and then I went back to read my book. I'm not sure how much time had passed, then I heard something. It was like a tapping noise. I thought maybe that it was just an animal outside, but it was rhythmic. And then I realized that it had to be a person. And when I looked over at my window and my eyes adjusted, I saw a human hand. It was reaching up from below the window, and it was tapping on my window. The first two incidents didn't bother me too much but I considered this one to be going too far. So I got up and went over to the window. Someone was there, but when they saw me, they quickly ran off toward the front yard. I was irritated enough that I ran through the house to the front door. I yelled out to whoever was out there that they should cut it out or I would be calling the police. However, I didn't see anyone at all, even though I had turned the porch light on. I went back into the house a bit annoyed, but getting over it pretty quickly. I went back to reading. It seemed that my threat was taken seriously, as I wasn't bothered at all for the rest of the night. I was able to read and relax, and then finally go to bed peacefully. I had been asleep for a short time when I was woke up by something. I wasn't sure what it was, but I thought maybe I had heard something. Remembering instantly the earlier incidents, I thought maybe a kid had come back or something like that. I got up to go and investigate. 
I put on my robe and I walked down the stairs without turning the lights on. I was used to the ambient light of the house, so I had no problem seeing until I got down to the bottom of the stairs. I saw something in the dark and I turned on the light switch at the bottom of the stairs. I immediately heard a sound in the front room of the house. Going over that direction, a person immediately ran out into the hallway. This wasn't a kid. This was a big, full-grown man. He had a bag and seemed like he was robbing my house. Before I could react, he pulled a big knife out of his jacket. He warned me that he would come back and kill me if I called the police. He was trying to cover his face with the arm while also brandishing the knife, so I only got a slightly good look at him. I was terrified and figured he was going to just attack me right then, but to my relief the man ran out the front door and into the night. Of course I almost didn't call the police, I was so terrified, but I really knew that I had to, so I did. But it was scary doing it, imagining that this man might come back and be true to his word and kill me. As far as I'm aware, the police never caught the guy, or at least specifically for robbing my house. I mean, that didn't mean he was free. He could have been arrested for something else. But as far as I knew, he was free and could come back at any time. For the longest time, this entire thing scared me to death. Little sounds and things like that would terrify me. I kept thinking that the robber was back to my house. Fortunately, however, he never showed up again. But the terror from the incident and the possibility of him following up on his word stuck with me for a long time. Number 2. Pool I have an in-ground swimming pool in my backyard. It was one of the necessities that I required in getting a house. I swam in high school and in college. It was something that I always enjoyed doing. So I had to have a pool when I eventually bought a house. I had a tough work week. So I just wanted to do everything that I could do to relax over the weekend, and I was looking forward to the time of just swimming in my pool. It was already getting dark outside by the time that I arrived home on Friday. Still, I had swam many times to the pool at night, and I just knew that I needed a really good swim. When I turned on the light by the pool and went outside, I noticed that the backyard light and my next door neighbor's house was on too. I didn't think anything about it much though. We had a fence between the yards that was pretty high. I definitely had all the privacy in the world in my backyard. So I was swimming for a while when I heard something. It was a little plopping sound, like something had fallen into the pool. I mean, it's not unusual for something like that to happen in an outside pool. But I also like to keep my pool as clean as possible, so I immediately started looking for whatever it was. I had to go underwater, and what I found was what looked like a piece of gravel lying on the bottom of the pool. It was like the kind of white gravel you would see on a road or in a driveway somewhere. I surfaced and looked at the rock. It was definitely what I thought it was. It was confusing as to how it could have gotten into the pool, but I didn't think too much about it at first. I just set it on the side of the pool and went back to enjoying myself. Then there was another plop. This was followed quickly by another plop. Then I felt something hit me on the head. I could assume right away that all this was gravel, like I'd found before, even though I hadn't seen it yet. Suddenly, lots of pieces of rock came flying, and I saw where they were coming from. They were being tossed over the fence from my neighbor's backyard. And trying to get away from the rocks, I wasn't sure what I could do. I was absolutely confused as to why my neighbors, who I didn't know, but never had any problems with, would even do something like this to begin with. I took some deep breaths and got underwater, so I would be hurt less if I would be struck by a rock. Then I swam underwater to the end of the pool that was closest to my house. But before I could surface, I felt someone grab me on the head and began holding me underwater. 
I did my best not to panic. I was pretty good at holding my breath underwater, so I just tried to remain as calm as possible. I did try to pull the hand or hands off of my head though, but it was extremely hard to do with no leverage. I wasn't at any point really thinking that I would drown, but it did seem at first that this was the intention of whoever was doing this to me. I kept trying to fight them off for a time period that I am unsure of, and then suddenly the hand stopped holding me down. I immediately surfaced and started breathing again while also looking around but all I could see was a figure running out of my side yard. I wasn't able to make anything out about the figure. I decided it made more sense to go into my house and call the police than it did to go after the guy, so that is what I did. When the police arrived, they discovered that no one was next door at my neighbor's house. In fact, we found out later, my neighbors had been out of the house all week. They had left town for a family vacation. However, their house was being lived in, most likely by whoever it was that attacked me. But they had no idea who it could be or why the person would have attacked me like that. Number three, weird. Okay, I'll start by saying that this story isn't completely scary. It is pretty weird though, and it just happened yesterday. So I thought I would share it because it has a remarkable coincidence that just kind of left me in awe. I was reading a story yesterday about the possibility of there being a serial killer presently in Chicago. I guess about 15 young men have been found in Chicago waterways. This got me thinking about things because I am from Chicago. I also had this enormous fear of really deep waters. So I was imagining me drowning in the Chicago River. That would be like an ultimate nightmare for me. I started talking to a couple friends about this. I began explaining how I had always been absolutely terrified of water. I'm also extremely scared of drowning. Other than taking showers, I avoid getting anything wet besides my hands. And technically, I don't like that either. But I am scared of lakes, rivers, swimming pools. I'm also terrified of bridges but I think that is more explainable. One time, crossing the bridge over the Chicago River, a friend who knew about my fear decided to scare me. Facing outward, he pushed me up against the railing of the bridge. This forced me to be looking out and down over the river, and it gave me a terrified feeling that my friend was going to throw me over into the water. He held me there for what seemed like a long time before finally letting go. Now I get terrified of bridges, and I even have nightmares about them. Another fear is flying over large bodies of water. I've only done this a few times, and thank God I could order Chardonnay on those flights. Otherwise flying doesn't bother me, however. Anyway, I was telling my friends about my fears. I decided to share a story with them. My mom was always interested in things like reincarnation. She in fact told me, that when I was a kid, I used to tell her these detailed stories about my real family. They always found it very entertaining, but also made my mom think that I was telling her about a previous life. My mom believes that I died on the Titanic in a previous life. But you know how that goes. Everyone who talks about past lives always talks about being famous people or involved in famous events before. So, of course she would think that I died on the Titanic. Although I never took the Titanic story seriously, I did consider the idea that I might have died in some sort of shipwreck in a previous life. However, I was telling my friends that I thought if I did, I might have died on a Navy ship. I told them if I had to pick a famous ship, I would pick the Indianapolis. I also had a fear of sharks, and I told them that would explain the shark fear but of course, that could have just been from watching Jaws. I work at home. When I'm working on my computer, I usually have some show that I am binging running on my computer while I work. Since about a week ago, I've been watching The Old Unsolved Mysteries with Robert Stack. The entire series is on Peacock, so I just put it on 
and I let it roll through the episodes in order. While I was sitting there, telling my friends the story, the weirdest thing happened. Robert Stack came on and asked if anyone had any unexplained fears. He specifically mentioned flying and water. So that surprised me, because it was exactly what I was talking about just then. Well, it only got weirder as I watched the story. It was about a man who had always been afraid of the water since he was a kid. He never knew why, but being in the water at all really terrified him. So he went to see a hypnotist, who was well known for doing past life regressions on his clients. Now first off, I'm not going to say that I believe in past life regression therapy. But true or not, that's not what is important. The thing is, that the guy under hypnosis told a story that was similar to what I had been talking about. He was scared to death of water, and someone suggested that he died in a shipwreck in a previous life. That was why he underwent the regression. And under hypnosis, he told the story about him being in the Navy. He was on a submarine called the USS Shark. It disappeared in 1942 and was suspected to have been sunk by a Japanese destroyer. I didn't see an advertisement for the segment because it was the first segment of the show, and it wasn't mentioned in the previous episode. I began talking about all this because of the possible serial killer in Chicago, and it is just so weird to me that while I was telling two friends about this, that a story with so much similarity appeared on the show. It had the fear of water, past life death in a navy vessel, and it was called the shark. Like the Indianapolis, it was probably destroyed by Japanese ships during World War II. I wish I could explain how I felt. It was a very creepy moment. I know it's not very scary, but if you think about it, I think it can be. It was very, very, very weird. And I guess it was probably really just a coincidence, but it was one hell of a coincidence. Hey y'all, Kill Orange Cat here. If you like this video, please let me know by hitting the like button. If you're not already subscribed to Killer Orange Cat, please feel free to click the subscribe button and bell below, or click the icon of Ichigo the Cat that will appear at the end of this closing. Leave me a comment, and share this video with someone you think might enjoy it. If you have an original story you'd like narrated on Killer Orange Cat, please email it to the address included in the description. But most importantly, don't forget to make sure to check in your closet, and check under your bed, because you never know where a killer orange cat might be hiding. Good night.